Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be discussing Swiss Army training. I found a lot of interesting little nuggets uh, in the training footage and I thought I'd share them with you because not only do they contain just regular techniques that we all see but also fundamentals that are taught and drilled that can also ensure your safety uh, because in judo before we learn how to throw we learn how to be safe first and even when you are at black belt level you still have some issues with this but um, before i start i just want to say that i'm very excited about a new project that i'm working on i'm almost finished and it's gonna come out uh, pretty soon uh, my dedication to judo history has been very long and this is something that i'd like to contribute to judo so the first thing that I want to talk about is how to fall. How to fall is actually very important. You see it in Judo and in Aikido, uh, not existent in Jiu Jitsu, unfortunately, but falling is actually very important. Before you start Judo, they actually teach you how to fall. So you have quite a few uh, types of falls. So the first one is you fall backwards and you roll your back and you tuck your chin and then you slap at the floor. Uh, you have also the rolling fall. Everyone knows this one. It's a lot of fun. And uh, also it keeps you safe. So anything from shoulder throws, forward throws, this is the type of falling that you should be doing. So this one here, really important. You see it all the time. Also you have side uh, falls here. You slap the mat, you fall. Uh, with your arm extended snapping sometimes yes you see a lot of people in judo they tuck their shoulder in and it's very unsafe but they're trying to avoid the score and here where sports and uh, safety can be clashing so here you see this is side falling it's also one of the principles that we learn so the next thing is of course uh, fighting with the rifles and the bayonets uh, the knives you know avoiding thrusts like this and kicking from far away with big boots is actually probably the safest thing you can do uh, of course you have uh, throws obviously something like hip throws are going to be very important not only they're fundamental but also some of the easiest that you can learn i can teach a white belt this throw from their first session obviously they're not going to master it but they will understand the nuances of this throw i don't know why people start with things like oh sotogari because you have to be on one foot and also the unbalancing is very difficult but in my opinion this should be the first throw to be taught that's just my opinion uh, other things of course you have elbow locks and wrist locks that are very important for little weapons you see it as well uh, judo curriculum is of course filled with these as well wrist locks and uh, elbow locks so the common one is of course a waki gatame waki is not only the armpit but all the right sides so or the ribs etc this is the part where it is considered waki so a lot of people set uh, a classical arm bar like this with the uh, shuji gatame position but they hold it under the armpit that would make it a waki gatame and uh, you see it it's very efficient you have all this weight all this leverage it is highly efficient of course you have your classical wrist locks where you turn the wrist and you change level and then they are obliged to go down otherwise they will have serious damage to their elbow and shoulder and the wrist depending on how you do it so here you have your arm entanglement or ude garami depending on how you do it and uh, you can get it from the stand up as well and then you can either go down with it or here finish it um, of course you have your sacrificing throws and here this headlock a guillotine turned into a uchi maki komi is quite impressive so side headlocks and guillotine if you can turn your waist to their side and you roll them over especially if they have a tight grip 
they will actually uh, follow you and roll around. Try it. You see it in Greco-Roman wrestling. Uh, it's rarely tried in judo and uh, jiu-jitsu, but drill it. Trust me, it it's actually very effective and uh, it works quite well. And you can be very creative with the ending. So here, a grab from behind turned into a shoulder throw. Again, classical self-defense, uh, change level, and then pull them down. Here, of course, cannot uh, forget a classical sacrificing throw. Also here, this one, this Yoko Wakare is also very uh, surprising to see because it is not a very common sacrificing throw. Of course, everyone knows Tomoe Nage and uh, how they can be wheeled off to uh, the back of your head and catapulted using your leg. It's important to roll your back and have a bent knee, otherwise it won't work. So the second one here is the side separation and uh, I was surprised to see it. And it it does need a, a bit of setup. You rarely see it on the international stage, but here, as he was sideways, he let him go over by pulling him and it ended up in this particular position. So it was nice to see not only they train falling properly and how to receive throwing, but also various techniques from wrist locking, standing techniques and uh, sacrificing techniques uh, as well so i really appreciated this this is i believe from 1973 and uh, it talks about the uh, of course the uh, swiss army training so uh, it's good that they have some fundamentals you see even high level competitors post their arms break it in judo in uh, jiu-jitsu everywhere and uh, it's always hard to watch so uh, please practice your falls uh, kodokan has a series on how to fall you see with little kids training it so whatever discipline you do especially grappling learn how to fall first and trust me it will pay off yesterday i did uh, two and a half hours of judo and i took i don't know how many throws we were drilling and if it wasn't for slapping the mat and really rolling over, I don't know what would have happened. So uh, please be careful. Always practice them. And uh, regarding my new project, it's a book. It's a translation of a old uh, book. Not all of it, but the part that discusses judo history. And I'm really excited to uh, come out with it very soon. This was Shadi, and thank you for listening.